All right, what's up everybody? I'm Dr. Jordan Weber. We are gonna go over some full body training today. I'm gonna go over five exercises for lower body, five exercises for upper body, and then five exercises that kind of mix everything together, okay? So what we're gonna do first is our lower body exercises. We're actually gonna start with our squat and some uh, lunge positions, okay? And some half kneeling positions just to see how the legs feel, and also to strengthen the mobility of our legs while we're doing it, which means we're also improving the strength. So what we're gonna do is just start in this squat position just like I'm in now. Now, if you feel like your heels are off the ground, that's fine for now. If you wanna elevate them using some weight plates, uh, that's fine. But eventually, we wanna be able to just bring those uh, heels down. Now, this should just be a basic movement you should be able to do. Uh, if you're not able to do this position, if you're not able to get into a squat position, then you're going to have to work on your ankle, your knee, your hip, and your back mobility. So basically, we're just going to sit into this position for a couple minutes. <clears throat> we're not going to count this as an exercise, uh, but we are going to uh, use this uh, as a warm-up for the lower body. So make sure that you do this before you perform your lower body movements. Uh, what I like about this exercise is that it's stretching the ankle, it's stretching the knee, and it's stretching the hip. Okay, so we're in hip flexion, we are in uh, knee flexion, and we are in ankle dorsiflexion. Okay, and in this position, we're stretching all three of those major joints. We're also keeping our back extended. Okay, so my back is just upright or extended. Okay, this would be flexed. And basically, just my upper back is flexed here, and now my upper back, the breast, spine, and cervical vertebrae are in the extended or neutral position. Here. Okay, so you can call this neutral here, um, and then the more you go like this, the more you're extending, the more you go like this, the more you're flexing. Okay, so this is our squat position that we want to be able to sit in comfortably. Now, after something like that, typically you're going to want to stretch things the other way. So what we're going to do is just go to our hands and knees, <clears throat> just set up a square position, and then from here, we're just going to go forward and back, stretching our wrists and our ankles, and we're going to point the toes this time, then go back and forth. All right, and then from here, what we're going to do is just two hip circles on each side, so we're going to bring that left knee to the elbow, open the hip up, internally rotate as you extend, keep the knee bent, flex forward, out and round, keep the knee bent, and back. And now two the other way. And other side. Noticing that I'm trying not to move my back at all, just the hip. And you're going to see that I'm not able to actually get the full extension, internal or external rotation, which means I have a lot of uh, room to improve on those hips. But it's important to warm those hips up before you do any lower body exercise, and that's basically what we just did, plus our knees and our ankles. Now we're ready to perform our five lower body exercises. The first one is going to be a basic air squat. <coughs> So we're just going to drop down and then just squat up and we're just going to bring our hips back and the knees will go slightly over the toes um, and we're just trying not to lean forward or trying not to lean too far back. We're just trying to keep our body in a straight line up and down here. Now the more advanced you are, the more you can bend your elbows all the way. Beginner, you can bring your hand out. Intermediate, you can probably just go halfway down. But eventually, you want to be able to go all the way down without any pain. We go for 20. You can get your elbows to touch your knees. It's fine to try to keep the chest. Back straight. Five more. One, two, 
three, four, five. Okay, so 20 air squats later, that's our first lower body exercise. We're gonna perform that five sets. We're gonna rest for about 30 seconds or about a minute and a half at the most, and then go on to your next set. Or if you want, you can try to go straight through to 100 total reps. All right, now what we're gonna do is a reverse lunge. Standing with our feet underneath our shoulders and our hips neutral here. So this would be an anterior pelvic tilt. This would be a posterior pelvic tilt. It's basically neutral. Hands by the sides. We're gonna step our right leg back. Our elbows will bend. And then we'll step forward and straighten the arms. I do tend to inhale on the way down, but I can also just breathe through this movement. So there's many different types of breathing. <laughs> if you want now, you can try to go opposite arm as you reverse lunge. You go for more of a symmetrical gait, more of a reverse thoracic twist with the lunge. Go five more on each side. We're going for about 15 total or 16 to 20 total on your first set. And then you'll do about five more sets after. All right, so we've completed our reverse lunge. Okay, we're going to do five more sets of those. Like I said, you're gonna to try to get 16, 20 total reps or eight to 10 reps on each leg, whatever's best for you. If you're a beginner, go for maybe three to eight reps okay, instead of eight to 10. All right, now we're gonna get into a uh, functional patterns position here where we're gonna put our knee in line with our toe and our back foot we're in a uh, plantar flex position, balancing our toe on the ground and bringing this knee to the ground. And this, this knee is gonna be flexed here, okay? So what we're gonna do in this position is kind of hang out and we're gonna squat and we're gonna stand up from this position. When we stand up, we're gonna distribute 80% of the weight on the lead leg and 20% of the um, weight on the rear or trail leg, okay? Digging the toe into the ground. So we're gonna, when we come down, bend the elbows. You can hover the knee off the ground or bring the knee down. And when you stand up, push the weight into the front knee, you're balancing on that back toe, okay? And try that 10 more times. Bend the elbows, straighten. Bend both elbows and knees, straighten. 80% of the weight is here. I want you to pull the heel into the ground and really fire the hamstring and glutes, but don't move the leg. So try to pull that heel into the ground, try to pull the ground back when you stand into this position. When you stand in this position, fully erect, chest is high, back is straight. Try not to stand like this, okay? Open up, okay? Four. Now, if you notice that these knees are going in, Keep those knees out. That'll be the first thing that happens. Okay, the knees will want to go in. Keep those knees out. Open that stance up just a little bit. We're going to switch. Just first get into the position. Make sure everything feels right. Try not to let those knees go in. Try to keep these knees parallel or in line with each other when you stand. Keep those knees out. Whew. 
Good job. So we've completed our squat, our reverse lunge, and our functional patterns. Half knee squat. So those are three lower body exercises. We're going to finish it up with two more. Okay. We're going to use the barbell for this next. All right, so you're going to hold on to a 45 pound dump, uh, barbell. Uh, if it's weighted, that's fine. 50, 60, 70 pounds, that's great. Um, your first set, just use the bar and then add 10 pounds on each side. The next set, then add about five to 10 more, and then five to 10 more, five to 10 more. You do four sets full. Okay. First thing we're going to do is just look straight and then your hips back. Let the bar slide down the knees, but don't bring the knees forward. Keep those knees in line with the, with the heels and the hips. Bring the hips back, sorry. So the heels are over the ankles, hips are back, chest is in line, and the back is straight. You're going to pull into the chest. Elbows are bent at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to lean over just a little bit more now. Straighten the arms, don't move anything else. And pull into the lower belly. I'm just going to go for 20 reps. Let's try to keep the back straight. And off, on your first 10 reps, everything feels fine. You want to challenge yourself by reaching further. Now, if there's a mirror in front of you, just look up at the mirror. Notice that I'm trying to keep my head in line with my back. I don't want too much like this. I don't want it too much like this. I want it right in the middle. So go for 20 reps with the bar. All right. Then what we'll do is add 10 pounds on each side or five pounds. Go for 15 reps. Then add five or 10 pounds. Go for 12 reps. Then add five or 10 pounds. Go for 10 reps. Then add five or 10 pounds and go to eight. And then done. So that would be your set for the bend over row. Four to, five, four to five sets is a very good number when you're working on such a compound movement. Now, when we're gonna hit the goblet squat, we're actually gonna utilize a dumbbell. And I'll also show you a version of the kettlebell. Okay, the goblet squat is a front squat, um, but it's healthier for your wrists. So if you have trouble getting into that front squat position, the goblet squat is a great alternative. So, starting with light weight, I want you to just take five to eight pounds and hold on to the top of the dumbbell. Knees and feet are slightly out. You're going to squat down and then stand back up. So, it's just basically that front squat or that air squat we did in the beginning, but now we're adding weight. Go for 20 reps to start. Now the last 10, I'll go the heavier weight and I'll show you how I would get into this position. So if you're using heavier weight, this is how I would recommend picking it up and getting it into your hands. So for the last 10 reps, I'm going to kind of get into a bent over row position, pull it up to my thigh. Hold here, in the stance I want to kind of squat in, kind of push it forward, and then try to get my hands and palms around the dumbbell. Okay? You can also simply just go like this, pull it up, pull it in. So, whatever works best for you. Okay? Open those feet out. Now this is going to challenge your back because you're holding on to the weight. You're going to want to lean forward. So keeping the back straight and utilizing more leg power to drive up is going to be essential. So really squeeze the glutes and everything on the way up and pull it in on the way down. Fire on the way up. Pull it in eccentrically. 
and push up. So we don't want to drop down too quick. Pull down with the hamstrings. Squeeze up with the glutes. Pull, push. Go five more. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So that was five lower body exercises. To review, we went over the squat, reverse lunge, the half kneeling functional patterns movement. Then we went over barbell bent over row. And then we went over the, um, the goblet squat. Now, the bent over row is going to work our posterior, and we're going to work toward our upper back. It's also loading the hamstrings in that aspect and the lower back as well. So if you want to trade that one out for the deadlift, I'm going to go ahead and show you that now. <clears throat> so with the barbell, hands are in a pronated or overhand position. I'll line up here, then I'll pull down here, and then push up, okay? Bend over, and then pull up here. So we should have gone over this instead of the bed over row. So we're gonna go over that now. The deadlift here. This is more of a straight leg deadlift. Knees slightly bent, which would be called the Romanian. And then you also have the conventional deadlift where you get down a little bit lower with the weight like that. <clears throat> so you can work whatever works best for you. I tend to use the Romanian deadlift, the slight knee bend, and then really squeeze the glutes and hammies on the way up. <sighs> so what I would recommend here is warming up with the bar, and then if they have bumper plates with the big 10 pound weights, use those first. So 10, 20, 30, 40, or uh, four more sets after your warm set. So five total sets of your bent over row, or sorry, your deadlift. So what well, we went over were six total exercises. The bent over row, more of an upper body exercise. That's why we added in the deadlift. Kind of got confused there. Not gonna lie. Um, so now we're gonna get into our upper body. So since we went over the bent over row with the barbell, that would be one of them. So you can trade that one out for the deadlift. And then for the upper body as well, we're gonna go over um, pushing overhead, what I'm looking for. And then also a, a one arm row, and we'll go from there. Now, pushing overhead, I'll show you first with the barbell since I have it, and then we'll move to the dumbbell. Okay, so overhand position, pronated position, I'm gonna look at the mirror here. What I first have to do is an upright row. So let's basically learn that first, okay? So the hands and the thumbs are about four inches apart from each other, okay? Thumbs are about four inches apart. And then from here, we're gonna pull the bar up, our body. Pulling it up, those hands, the hands are in line with the elbows. So you get a side view. So this is your upright row. Now, a lot of people lean forward. I want your shoulders pinned back, and I want your head up, okay? And I really want you to use as many muscles as possible to pull that up. Okay, I don't want you just relying on your on your uh, your anterior delts. I want you to use your upper back. I want you to use your arms. I want you to pull it up. Okay, bar is not going to move if you don't actually move it. So trying just to isolate muscles here isn't healthy for the entire body. So upright row. Notice that the legs are straight. We're not straddling our knee bent here. Okay, so there's your upright row. What I want there is using this 45 pound dumbbell, four sets of 20. Yeah, four sets of 20. Can't get 20, get 10. Can't get 10, get eight. Can't get eight, get six. Try to get four sets of upright rows. Okay, that's gonna really help you then shoulders up and strengthen them up real quick. From here, we'll go to the upright row to our front squat position. Now, 
you'll see people extend their fingers like this. And for some people, that's too much on the wrist. And honestly, too much on the fingers and the palm are extensors here. So that means is if you were to add load or weight to each side of this barbell and perform a front squat, you would also be loading those forearms which are holding the bar. Now, I only have a couple fingers on here because, well, let me see, I can get all my fingers on here. It's fine for me at 45 pounds, but now if I add weight, that's another thing. Okay, now if I add weight to this, that's going to intensify the resistance in my forearm, which is going to obviously make some adaptations in that area. Could be good or bad. Now, if I overdo it, it's going to kill that wrist. I'm going to get injured and sore. I probably won't come back to this exercise. Now, if I don't want to get injured and sore, I'm going to stay right here, come back up, not use any weight. Now, if that's an issue, you can also straighten the arms. Okay, I don't recommend this to beginners, so. Um, take this at your own safety precaution. Now, if you have a 45 pound dumbbell and you're balancing it like this, you can also perform that front squat just like that. Okay, that means that all you need here is good shoulder flexion, mobility, and strength. And then, but mostly your back needs to be able to support it because if your back flexes forward, the bar rolls forward and onto your hands. Okay, so that's what you're trying to. Avoid it at the gym if you don't want to be caught being embarrassed. All right. Okay. So for our shoulder press, overhand grip, we're going to go over that upright row, pull the body, pull the bar up, pull right underneath the chin. We're just going to look forward and we're going to press the bar in front of the face and over the crown of the head. Okay. Right over the axis of the body. From here, we're going to pull the bar underneath our chin, and we're going to push all the way up toward the sky, noticing that the plug just came off here. So that's going to be our shoulder press. Okay? Go over that one more time. Upright row. Elbows, notice, are underneath the shoulders. They're not underneath the chin. Okay? Notice that the hands are underneath the over top of the elbows. Now, I see a lot of people when they press, they lean back, and all that weight goes to your lower back. So if you're going like this, whatever weight you're going over top of your head is being forced into your lumbar spine, hence why a lot of people have lower back issues. Okay, When you press over top, you don't follow these directions, you'll have lower back pain. You can almost guarantee it. So I'm trying to teach you away from that. <clears throat> okay, so from here, upright row. We'll press over top. Okay, make sure you don't do any wire. All right, press over top, hold it here. Now I just want that bar to go over top. You should be able to hold this. You should feel like you should be able to hold this for at least a minute. Okay, you can't hold a 45 pound bar, if you're male, over the head, or if you're female, about 25 to 35 over the head for more than 10 seconds, then that shows you that you need to work on your shoulder strength, okay? More advanced people should be able to get this bar over top for at least 60 seconds, okay? That shows that you have pretty good shoulder strength. Now, I'm not talking 45 pounds, it could be five pounds, but you should be able to get your hand over your head without using your lower back. So noticing that my hips are underneath my shoulders, my knees are underneath my hips, my feet underneath, my knees. Pull down. Now you can also do the front squat or the front uh, split stance position where you push up just like this. So this is an option here. So we showed you that position before. Okay. Most of the way is distributed into the front leg. This would be your split stance shoulder split, uh, press. This would be your um, neutral stance shoulder press. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is practice about 20 reps, shoulder press, 45 pound weight, then add two and a half or five, do another set, about 15 reps, go to 12, then 10, then eight reps, okay? About four or five total reps or sets, and then add weight as you go, progressively go up. And then following week, you can maybe add a little bit more or keep it the same amount of weight. 
All right. <clears throat> so that was the overhead shoulder press. Make sure that you're shoulder pressing something over your head uh, once or twice a week, I think. I think it's really important for you to have strength overhead. You're constantly lifting things. You're constantly having to put your arms up in the air. You want to have strength in this area. You don't want to be weak in your end ranges, um, especially with your shoulders here, because you are going to be um, not able to do a lot of things that you want to do, like throw, like pick things up and stuff like that. So keep those shoulders super healthy. All right. <clears throat> so we went over the upright row. We went over the shoulder press. We did a neutral stance, and we did the split stance. Split stance, knees are parallel, you're on your back toe. And on your front foot and your front and both knees, don't let them go in. So what I mean is keep your gait, okay, like this. We don't want to be too narrow. So you still want a pretty good gait here. All right, knees are in line. Pulling this front heel into the ground, okay. And there's your split stance shoulder press. Basically doing it unilaterally there, okay? Unilateral split stance shoulder press, or your neutral, but making sure you're not extending the back on your neutral shoulder press. So we went over the shoulder press, we went over the bent over row, and we went over the upright row. Now I'm going to show you the one arm row. Okay, so all you need is a bench and a dumbbell. You're going to press your front hand here or your left hand if you're starting with your right arm and your left knee is on the bench. Now you can put your toe into the bench or you can point your toe, whatever you prefer. I don't think that matters. Now, I tend to push my toe into the ground because I like that stretch. I like getting that stretch in the Achilles. I like getting the soleus stretch. Um, and I also like getting this knee stretch here. So I'm actually doing a little bit of mobility while I'm here. And then also here, I'm pulling into the bench I'm really wrapping this hand around here, and I'm really pulling this lat out as I push forward. So I'm really reaching forward here, and I can control that with my knee bent. Now, if I have more, less knee bent, I go up higher. If I have more knee bent, I go lower. But I want it low, and I want a good stretch. This back leg is really important. Now, I don't want this going up and down like this. It's not an exercise on the back leg. So you're using that back foot as a balance and support mechanism. Okay, so generally, Pushing the toe into the ground just like that. Reach down, pull up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I go for twenty. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's a 40 pound weight, 20 reps each side. It's a good warm up for me at 200 pounds. You might have to do half that if you're half my weight. All right, now this is about 60 to 70 percent intensity on my first set, never going over 80 on my first set. Always using that first set as a warm up. Always doing 20 reps or 30 reps as a warm up, never going over, never going less than 10. So here we go, other side. I'm all set up. Now I want to even that out. All right, so there's your one arm row, Woo! using the bench. 20 reps, I generally recommend on each arm as a warm up. I know it's pretty high. And then 15, 12, 10, four sets. You don't need to do five sets of that. Now you could also break that down to 15, 12, 10, or 12, 8, 6 if you're trying to build mass. Trying to build mass, tend to keep those reps smaller, really. Really use everything you got. And then, if you're just a beginner, go with the higher reps. And if you want more tone, go with the higher reps. All right. <clears throat> now, we went over 
the bent over row, the upright row, the shoulders press and split and the neutral stance, and the one arm row. All right, now we're gonna go over um, a cable exercise, and then I'll even add in, like I told you before, five core exercises or five exercises to tie everything together. All right, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna do some biceps and triceps. Um, maybe differently than you've done before, okay? What we're gonna do is <clears throat> start with our biceps. We're gonna go with a low weight, okay? We're gonna go across the body just like this, and then bring it out and then down. Cross, out, down. Cross, out, down. Cross, out, down. Cross, out, down. Cross. You can have a feet a little bit wider that helps. Out and down. Cross. Out and down. Cross. Out. Down. Cross. Out. Down. Go over about 12. And then switch. This is going to challenge your wrist strength and your elbow mobility, and also strengthen your elbow and biceps. Try and glue that elbow for the rib cage. Going about 12 each side here. Now for your tricep, you're going to use the same cable that you're using. You just do a one arm overhead tricep, okay? So I like to cross my hand across the chest, bring the elbow back, and then press up here, okay? Now you can do this with a pronated grip, or you can change it up with a supinated grip, okay? Just like that. And you can decide what works best for you. Might be harder one way or the other. Now for this, we're gonna go with 20, 15, 12, 10 reps, four sets of each exercise. Okay, going from bicep to tricep with about a 30 second to a minute and a half rest, whatever your time slot or intervals are. <clears throat> this is also a really good stretch on the lat and serratus anterior. Serratus anterior is the muscle in the upper portion and mid middle portion of the rib cage. Okay, the serratus anterior is right here. It goes like systemus dorsi. Here's your pec major, pec minor. Here's your uh, abdominal wall, external obliques, pectoris major, minor, and then so scapularis and all that kind of stuff. So targeting the triceps here, with both pronated and supinated elbow anatomical positioning. Okay. Now, you could use the same weight and do 15, 12, 10 if you're a beginner, or if you're a novice, you can add a little bit of weight each, each set. If you're advanced, you can take it uh, to wherever you want to go. So that would be the one arm, uh, the unilateral one arm uh, biceps uh, curl and then triceps extension. And that would be our fifth upper body exercise. So we covered everything but the chest. Now, um, you probably do that often, but I'll give you two quick tips, okay? If you're performing push-ups. Push up position, back is straight, elbows are in, push into the ground just like that. Okay. Now, I don't like the elbows out, but if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. Okay, so that's what I would 
consider a full functioning push up. Now, if you're going to do push ups, you have to think about wrist mobility. Now, after you perform push ups, most likely your wrists are going to be feeling it, putting all that load in your wrists. Now, go like this. You can't get those hands straight or a piece of paper flat on those hands, and you do not have 90 degree wrist extension. Now, if you don't have 90 degree wrist extension and you're in more than a 90 degree, this is more like 100 degree when you lean forward, wrist extension plus load, you're more likely to injure your wrist. And then you'll suffer in your push. You won't have a big chest if that's what you're gunning for. Or you might not get those arms strong as you want them to because your wrists are your limitations. So make sure that you stretch your wrists. One way you can do that is just going like this, hold it for two minutes. Then after two minutes, pressing the fingertips and palms into the ground, slowly amping up progressive effort 10 to 100%. Holding 100% effort for 10 seconds, and then regressing the effort by pulling those fingertips off the ground, up to 10 seconds, and then back to your passive stretch, and repeat the process on the other side. Now, when you're doing something like this, concentrate on the breathing in your first two minutes of passive stretching, and you're progressing the effort, progressing the effort in the entire body, not just the wrist, so slowly extend it out to the entire body. And then when you're regressing, you're using your rails contraction, still keeping that same intensity high in the body while you're going your rails. And then after rails, back to your passive. Don't just rush out of this position because you think you're done. Wait, give it some time. Now, if you're not going through this whole entire process of tails and rails, passive, active, uh, and uh, regressive stretching, and you're not going to get any benefit from uh, these stretches. So take that into consideration. And the movies that I post um, are more of a flow. Uh, that's not really me doing my mobility training. That's uh, a result of mobility training. So put that in perspective that you actually have to put time in each joint or each position to improve that specific joint. If that's what you're intending to do. If you don't need to do that, then you don't have to worry about that. And you can move freely and you can do any position that you want. And that's what I like to do, I like to move freely. So let's go ahead and start targeting the core. We're going to give you five more core exercises. So I like to use the rope. <clears throat> okay, The rope is a great device because it turns into a one-arm device and it gives you more length in your cable. So if your cable length is lacking, the rope is going to help make up for that. Now, since this side doesn't give me as much length as this side. I'm going to transfer over. I'm going to show you my favorite core exercises with the rope. Okay. Now, this you can start off uh, middle to heavy weight. And what we'll do here is step back into that reverse lunge, go into a kneeling position. We'll naturally extend our back and flex our shoulders and stretch our lats, stretch our serratus, stretch our triceps. The neck should feel loose here. This should feel like a really good, nice stretch here. And what I like to do is sink and hold this position here. And then I like to bring my elbows to my knees and then my elbows straighten, look up, feel the stretch in my back, pull down, elbows to knees. Reach up, pull down. Reach and pull. You go for 20 reps. Now, what the hard thing here is getting in the right position. So I'm going to show you a couple different positions you can try. If this doesn't feel right, always start with a little bit lower weight. Remember, 20 to 30 reps is a good start number for all of your movements. You never want to just do 10 or 8 reps. That means that it's too heavy or too difficult. So after about 20 reps, 
I'll show you some other different positions. Now, this is what I don't want to see here. I don't want to see you too close. You going straight down. Okay. Uh, I feel like that's more of an elbow stretch. And then from here, when you squeeze here, I want to really squeeze your abdominal wall. And not just come down and just go back up. Okay. I see people do them like this, and this doesn't really work that well, um, but you can make it work if you're a little bit more advanced, okay? This, I think, for me, is a little contradictive, but I could be wrong. Um, I'm sure you can get some type of uh, benefit from that. Um, just feeling that force and just having that ability to do that, I think is probably pretty important. So I wouldn't neglect that. All right. And then you can also have a longer stance position or what I like to do sometimes after I do these, I'll do about 20 reps and then I'll do some short reps here where I go about five inches off the ground with my elbows and then press my elbows into the ground. Now here I'm targeting my uh, teres major, teres minor, my uh, a little bit of my shoulder capsule here, my posterior delt, uh, my latissimus dorsi here working. And what I'm doing is isolating the upper back and a shoulder capsule here uh, and shoulder flexion and um, stretching the tissues in shoulder flexion, shoulder, uh, and then also stretching the tissues in back extension. Here. <clears throat> now, why am I doing that here? And that is also to help connect all of this uh, frontal and side plane uh, muscle tissue. So, I just showed you the uh, rope pull down, so elbows to knees. I looked for about 20 to 30 reps. And then you can try those advanced after if you like. So that'll be our first core exercise. The next one we'll do for our core. What I mean by core is just basically using the whole body. Okay. Using the core to move. Okay. So there's obviously upper and lower body components when you're utilizing the core. The core can't be used in isolation and the whole body can't be used in isolation. All right, so what we're going to do is get into a lunge position, hold on to the rope. This is our left foot forward, our left arm is across, and the rope is on the right side of our body. What we're going to do is we're going to get into that functional patterns position, and we're going to stand up and bring the rope across our body. Lower down, on the way up. So connecting lower to upper body. Trying to keep that back. So in, in the ground, go for about 10 reps. Okay. Now, I forgot to mention, with the rope pull down, elbow to knee, go for about 20 reps, 15, 12, and then 10 reps, four sets. This one, for this exercise, we only do 10 reps, three sets. So these are a little bit harder, more taxing, use more body tissue. So this needs to be a lower amount of reps. So reaching across, other way now, all right, now you have to move back, be in line. Now you have to set yourself up, okay, in our functional patterns position here. Remember, the front leg is dominant, and you're on your back toe, using 20% of your force on that back leg. Try right, not to let those knees cave inward. <coughs> All right. 
So that was our half kneeling functional patterns torso uh, twist. That would be our second exercise. All right. Now we're going to bring this up halfway. We'll be standing now. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and use the uh, grip here. Hold on. All right. So now we're going to do our push split stance, power push, and power pull. Okay, those are both functional patterns. I'm going to get some water. <coughs> So, going to put this on a lower weight, <laughs> make sure this cable is in line with the elbow, not too high, not too low, okay? Now, if this is irritating your arm, use a resistance band, if you have the opportunity to use one, or just use this cable, holy shock here, okay? All right, so. We're going to start with our right hand. We're going to bring our right arm forward, and we'll bring our left foot forward. Okay. From here, we're going to bring our left hand and elbow into the side of our body, just like this. Okay. You're going to straighten out like you're about to punch somebody. Okay. Left knee forward, right hand forward here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to switch. So we're going to bring. Our right hand back, left hand forward, left foot back, right foot forward. Watch. Okay, just like that. So that's your first step. Make sure you did that. So you should have your left hand forward and your right foot forward. Okay, from here, what you'll do is switch. Okay, just like that. The arms do the same exact thing, and the feet do the same exact thing. Okay. Then you're going to add in that third step that I just showed you. So you're just going to quicken it up. Okay. And then about 10 to 15 on each side. So I'm going to switch. Left hand forward. Right foot forward. Right elbow bent 90 degrees. Okay. Left foot back. Right foot forward. Switch. And you're going to use the punch stop here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, when you do this, Show you on this side. All the way back, all the way forward, both arms. Okay. Using your gait, gait pattern, all these movements are all gait related. Okay. So it's all going to improve your gait. Now the pull. Again. You're about 10 to 12 reps, 10 to 15 reps, only about three sets here. These are going to be very taxing. Rest as much as you need in between sets, one to three minutes. Now from here, our pull. That'll go for all the exercises. Rest as long as you need. Don't overtax yourself. At least 30 second rest for advance, and then 60 to uh, three minutes. Uh, if you're a uh, beginner or novice. All right, so same premise here, right arm forward, which means our left foot is forward. So whenever your right arm is forward, the opposite foot is forward. 
and if the opposite foot is forward, the ipsilateral, or same sided arm, is doing the opposite. Okay? He's doing, so if this is forward, this is back. My right leg is back, my right arm is forward. Okay, and so that's what we're trying to go for. Focus on your breathing here. Using your whole body to keep your body tight. Squeeze those quads. Flex those toes into the ground. Push away from the ground. Use the abs. Use up the back. So after about a minute there, we're going to go for four to five more sets. So five minutes total of that position. Okay. Now if that's too much, other options can be your basic crunch, or you can do a roll up. Okay. This would be a nice functional roll for you to do, keeping your chin tucked, or you can add this in. So I'll just give you some other ideas. Why like this is because it trains the back to roll. Rolling is important in case you do roll, it'll protect your head and your brain. So if you don't practice, you won't know what it's like and you'll, you might hit your head into the ground. So always keeping the chin tucked when you roll. It's always a good stretch exercise to do. And then if you can, Try to roll to your squat and then see if you can stand. And then one add. All right, you 
also and do the bikes. But when you do the bikes, you're basically just getting the hip flexor, which is okay. You're not really targeting here, but this is very functional. So you're using your whole body, just like that. Okay, you do straight leg left, straight leg leg lifts, just like this. Really good. Target lower in the V. Okay, you do your bikes, elbow to knee, keeping the elbow glued to the ground. When you're doing that, heel glued to the ground, knee and elbow glued together, and then switch. Okay, don't half do it like this. Go all the way, straighten the whole body just like that. You can also <clears throat> go into your bridge. If you haven't done this in a while. Bend the knees, hold here. You should be able to hold this four sets, 60 seconds if you haven't done it in a while. And then after you've done four sets, 60 seconds um, for a couple weeks, then I would include this and just straightening the leg up, opening it out, going back up and out. This is from Darius Strong, MMA UFC trainer training fighters here, so really functional for being on your back and having strength in this uncomfortable position where you never know, you might find yourself in a position that makes you use these muscles and if you haven't done it in a while, it's going to be a problem if you ever get there. So that would be your bridge hip opener bridge exercise, two crucial exercises you need to be doing pronto. Um, another exercise I really like if you're not doing is laying on your stomach, straightening your hands, and then palm will face up, legs off the ground, arms off the ground, back of the hands, touch the glutes, hold here, reach forward, up, Okay, and then obviously I have tons of videos on shoulder stuff here that you can do with uh, Indian clubs, uh, with the dowels, uh, with the lacrosse balls, and with no tools. So make sure that you check that stuff out too. All right, Woo. I'm white. I'm going to take probably a 10 minute break because we just finished a full hour and uh, I didn't really rest, did I? So if I can do it in an hour, you can also do it in an hour. So um, work up to that. Now, I wouldn't say go and do all those exercises now, but if you watch this whole video, that's important because now you know exactly how to go through each exercise. It's not a good thing just to see an exercise and copy it. You need to understand why you're doing it. So push, pull, hinge, squat. Um, these are all things that functionally strength trainers will condition into its athletes. And on the functional patterns, functional range conditioning is a little bit newly evolved physical training that is awesome. So combining all these efforts as a, uh, a teacher is uh, crucial because you have to be able to answer questions when students ask you questions, and um, it's really important for you to learn, consumer, the athlete, and the learner, how this stuff is done. So comment, subscribe, and please share. Please, please share. See y'all. Thanks for tuning in.